Yeah. Um, I got so many favourite moments. I, they were just every everything I did with Peter was a real joy. Um, he's one of the funniest men I know. Um, so most scenes, a lot of the time, we have real trouble just getting through the day. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. like to say that I really like your character and I'm really thankful for um, your character in the show because otherwise it would have been the same I think. Um, well, my would, yeah, I reckon it would be a flop. It would be a flop. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, my question was what's the best thing about playing in such a successful show as Game of Thrones? Thing. It's all. It's hard to really pinpoint what the best thing is. Um, it's allowed me to renovate the old buildings on my farm. Uh, that's been cool. It's um, apart from just as an actor. It's been because uh, I, like I said, I, I think I've become a bit dispirited with the parts I was being offered and uh, was kind of walking away from the business. So with Bron. Um, I I found the character and was given a character that uh, really kind of ticked a lot of boxes with me, and it was just a pure joy to kind of play with him and allow him to come through me and maybe you know a chance to allow parts of myself that I wouldn't necessarily be able to express in my normal life, you know, to kind of channel those primal parts, um, <laughs> channel those primal parts. Um, so there's that side, it was just wonderful as an actor and just the whole experience has been really incredible to spend all that time with those people and a lot of the young people who have been brought up with that show and it's kind of shaped their early lives and to experience the closeness of everybody. So there's that on the human level and then on a personal level also it's opened a lot of doors for me and allowed me to involve myself with things that um, to do with the heart that I can get involved in some good causes and get behind purely because you know if you get once you're involved in a show like that then your voice people will listen to you more and it um, helps me to uh, you know we're living in a very critical time uh, and there are many incredible people doing a lot of incredible things so if it allows me to get behind them and help to make a shift that we need to make, then that's probably the most important thing for me. Thank you, I love you. I love you too. Well, um, I, have to, I think the, um, where you know, Bron takes on the Drogon and has a go, he gets his moment, his glory moment. Yeah. Last season, that was last season, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that was such a such a we were a whole month filming that and it was such an incredible setup and it was like you know being like a little boy just being given all his toys at once and told he can have as much fun with all that these stunt men and the fires going off and the horses and to be able just to take part in that and live out that it was like kind of going back into my ancestry kind of uh, awesome thanks cheers. Um, what would your last wish be? Like, if you were dying, what would your last wish be? <laughs> well, that? Well, let's get deep. You mean <laughs> Jerome or Bron? Uh, both. <laughs> Either. I shouldn't have said that, should I? My last so wish. Well, um, my last wish, I think, when I'm dying, and in effect, we're all kind of dying, we're all um, in one sense and much maybe closer to death than we realize. I think it's to really accept and be present and accept it and with love in my heart for, um, for my life and gratefulness and um, to be totally 
accepting of that and ready to um, move on to the next stage uh, in a surrendered way. That's really deep. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, the episode where you're trying to get uh, Podrick to lose his virginity, he eventually didn't pay. Was Podrick really that good with the ladies? I don't know, I wasn't there. I mean, how do I know? Um, but he seems to have done something. That's all I know. Well, that's that particular scene. It was amazing, because I, yeah, I hadn't seen that. I mean, when I was there on the day in that scene, I was totally in it anyway, because like I said, all, nearly all of it was set up, of course, except the dragons. Um, but, uh, you know, that everything was so provided for that I just, it was just like being in real life. The, the game was there in front of me to play. So it was very exciting. But when I saw it back, I was on the edge of my seat. I, was, I found it such a thrilling sequence that I, uh, even though I knew what was going to happen, I was like totally psyched about it. So it was very exciting. It was amazing to be part of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, hi again. Hi. I saw you this morning. Hello there. Uh, I was so nervous that I didn't know anything to ask you. Uh, so I wanted to ask you what is your most fun scene that you ever did on the Game of Thrones and what is the worst scene? Fun. I think the, the most fun, <laughs> and it still makes me laugh, was because um, I'm, I'm good mates with, uh, with Dan who plays Pod. We get on well. And there's a scene, there's a scene where um, he, where I, I, we haven't seen each other, we're to kind of re, we reunite and I, I creep up behind him and scare him and grab him by the neck and then, and then we have a little, I teach him about fighting a little bit. Yes. And uh, we, we've done that scene, because uh, that's, yeah, we've done that scene and the director said, okay, we got, a, we got a good one of that. And then he just came up to me and said, just have fun with it now, Jerome. So. That's where, and he, so Daniel didn't know what was coming, and that's when I, uh, when I say to him, come on, you're the one with the magic cock, and I grabbed him by the balls. <laughs> that's a good scene. And, and he didn't know that was going to happen, and you, if you watch that, you can probably find it on YouTube, but you, you can see the look on his face, it's just classic, because he just doesn't know whether to laugh or cry, and he's laughing, if you watch, you'll, you'll see, you'll see him laughing, I think that just, that case gives me most joy when I think about that. Yeah. And your worst scene? Worst scene? I... I don't know. There is, I mean... Realistically, personally, there might have been a few where I had a lot to say. Where I get... Sometimes, you know, I get nervous and... Tangled up in my words. And start making mistakes. And it's like you can go into your head and panic. And I have a couple of those. Which, which uh, wouldn't have been my best days, but you, hopefully you wouldn't be able to notice that. No, I haven't noticed. You have noticed? I haven't. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. thanks. Well, I think the death... I keep on... I always forget her name, just because I found it so upsetting. Is it Shireen? Yeah. The daughter of Stannis. The daughter of Stannis. When she got burned. I was like, I found that. Because she was so sweet. And for a man to, to burn his own daughter, it's like, come on. That's, so, that's bad karma. So, yeah. And Oberyn, I really, I, I thought he was really cool. We all loved him. So I didn't want him to go. But then, if, I had, if he hadn't gone, and, it's only because I didn't fight that. Ron didn't take him on the over and ended up dying, so I suppose I have to take some responsibility. Thank you. Thanks. Which way would you like to go? <laughs> well, if Bron, yeah. if Bron got to pick his own death. Or you. Me. The character's done. Oh, well, I would have gone for something, or I would go for something. <laughs> 
who knows this could happen. You know, I, I always like to be involved in, you know, I'd like him to be a hero and maybe, you know, be on the battlefield saving Tyrion or something. Um, that would uh, that would be nice. Bronn would probably might like to be involved with a female. Probably that would probably be the way he would go. Thank you. Okay. I have a question too. Um, Bronn is, of course, uh, uh, it's, it's a, the, the character is a long time in the series right now, and uh, you've been on so many places. Where, where did you all shoot? Of the places? Yeah. Um, me, Croatia, um, Northern Ireland, Spain. Those are my three places, yeah. No, but I didn't get to go to uh, Iceland, which would have been nice. But, um, yeah, Croatia, beautiful, Spain, amazing, and yeah, the hills around Northern Ireland. Some of some very cold nights out there. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jerome. Hi. If you would be such a ruthless killer as Bron, yeah, who would you kill in, as a character in any series, movies, or books? Oh God! Who would I kill? As a Do you mean not Game of Thrones character? Yeah, yeah, outside of Game of Thrones, of course. So would it be Luke Skywalker or would it be... Uh, Why would I want to kill Luke Skywalker? I don't know, that's your choice. That's not quite I find really hard. There's nobody springs to mind in terms of people I'd like to kill in a film because it seems like I'm at, uh, something I could never do. Um, so I, I gave, gave a punch in the face. But yeah, I've drawn a blank. I need time to think about that. Maybe, yeah. Okay, it's sorry. Just, just answer it at the end. I'll, I'll be in the audience. Okay, I'll have a thing. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. So, my question is, how did it feel like the first day on set? The first day on set of Game of Thrones? Yeah. Well, I think, I remember being really nervous. Because I haven't filmed anything for 10 years or something. And I was like, oh my god, what am I doing here? I mean, it's a bit of an actor's condition anyway to always be thinking, when are they going to find me out? That's, that's, with a lot of actors I know, I know I have that. Every job you get, you're like, oh god, perhaps they'll, they'll realize, like, you know, that I'm useless and I can't really do this. And Thrones, when I got there, and realized what a big setup it was, because we didn't really know what was what it was like, what it was going to be. I was like, oh, well, this is probably this could be terrible and die, you know, die a death after one season. The Americans trying to do European medieval history, and then I, you know, I turned up and there was so much class around me and care being put into it, and money, and um, I hadn't done any acting for a long time, so I, I remember being really nervous. That's all. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I was, I was a little upset at how he came to his end, and I didn't really want him to come to his end. I, I wanted to. I needed to take actually some time off for something else, so I did want to not do a fifth season, much as I love that program. And I think I love that character more than any character I've played. So, and I did love the whole show and, and everything about it, but I needed to end it. And I, but I didn't want it to end that way. I wanted it, and I thought I wanted some redemption for him. I thought he'd go to a place where um, he'd come through something and that him and Rose deserved to end up together. And that didn't happen, and I was sad about that, but they obviously thought that was the best thing to do. And I love the guys, the writer and the guys, so, so it's, all, it's all good. It was, just, it was sad. Very, very sad. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, my feeling is, Tyrion, my feeling is that, uh, that he, he kind of associated with Tyrion. He saw quite a lot of himself, a bit of an outcast very individual, odds stacked against him, 
and uh, he had a fondness. I think he has a fondness for Tyrion that he doesn't necessarily have so much for Jamie Lannister. Although I think Jamie's grown on him a bit as they've spent time together. Um, so, yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, did, you have to, uh, did you ever have to improvise in one of the uh, scenes and they actually kept it in the series? And if so, which one? Well, I, I mean, uh, to a certain extent, for me, when, when I'm acting, there, it's nice if, if you can feel, in a way, like most of it is improvising. Even though you know what you're going to do and roughly where you're going to step, you want to stay, keep it fresh so that you're not just repeating something. So in that sense, you try and stay in the moment so it, so it feels like an improvisation. I think Aria, Aria is still, even though she's kind of changed over the course of the, season, the, the series, but she was, yeah, she's my favorite. She's like a real warrior. And, uh, and Maisie's so good at, at that, at playing Aria. She's still, yeah, she's still my favorite. Favorite? I don't know. Yeah, I think Tyrion probably is my favorite. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, I was here uh, at the last show. And there was one of the people, one of the actors, I don't even know his name, but um, he was in the Transformers movie. And Mark it's, Ryan. It's, it's not something I know much about. And my, my, my kid was here to see him. And then I thought, I know you. And it was somebody from Robin de Sherwood from back in the 80s that, you know, obviously was my hero when I was a kid. Uh, so, you know, having watched Game of Thrones, having watched Ripper Street, I mean, you are really at the top of your game at the moment. You are fantastic to watch on the screen. It's an absolute pleasure. So the cool. question is, if you had free choice over what character, what period, whatever story you were going to play, what would you like to do if you, if you could choose yourself? Um, really, I really don't know because um, I it literally would be to do with how it makes me feel when I'm reading it, you know, so I could say, I do, I would like to do a western. I'd like to play a really cool character in a western. I, I think I've got one of those in me. Um, so that is something that I've kind of put out there. Like, um, but, um, or a wizard of some kind. Richard Harris did it, so why not you? Richard Harris did it. Yeah, something like that. Something with some magic in it. A production that... Um, that gives us some, some hope and inspiration as well. Uh, at this time, that would be nice to be involved in something that helps us to reconnect to our hearts and, uh, and our planet. That would be cool as well. That would be awesome. I'd definitely buy a ticket. Thank you. Thanks so much. And, um, the character, um, I just heard you, you were uh, not acting that much anymore. Um, is there any chance you will be uh, starting acting after Game of Thrones, when Game of Thrones ends? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't like, stopped acting. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, taking Game of Thrones put me back in there. And I'm not, so I'm very open to what comes along now. I, I, um, I just went to Morocco and did a, a, did a part in John Wick with uh, Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry. That was really nice to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm just looking for something really interesting to do. Okay, and uh, I, of course you had in the, in, the, in the 90s, you had a big uh, uh, musical career. Well, yeah, there was, there was a crazy couple of years there that, that came out of the blue, yeah. Yeah, and is there any possibility that that will uh, come back anytime, maybe? I'll never say never, 
it's unlikely, but I mean, if the um, if there was a good purpose for it, or if my brother allowed me to sing with him, because um, he's a very talented songwriter um, and actor, um, then that might tempt me back to do something with some some of my dearest friends and musicians, and I love that. I do love music and I love singing. Um, so if the right opportunity came, who knows? Well, I I, I know what's going to happen. To Paul. <laughs> so all everything is already filmed. It's all done, yeah. And like I said, he's a determined guy, so I think he's he's either going to he's either going to survive or he's going to die. Um, he's either going to get a castle or he'll die. One of those two. Or um, possibly, because I, you know, Daenerys hasn't actually met Bronn yet. And I have a theory that when she sees him, that her leg's going to go, she's going to dump Jon Snow. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he will, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of naturally going to happen, isn't it? You think about it. And uh, so he'll have his rightful place next to her, you know, living happily ever after in a castle with three dragons. Exactly. To two dragons. Yeah, and the mother-in-law. Yeah.